Since drill rap began in Chicago, drill artists have been using their music and social media as a tool to disrespect and taunt their ops. One such well-documented case is that of Lil J and Lil Durk. The beef between Lil J and Lil Durk has been on for years, but was put on hold after Lil J's incarceration back in 2015. Lil J's world came crashing down after being handed a 14-year sentence in 2019. But luckily for him, he was released early, in April of 2022. Well, he's back on the scene and seems to be stirring things up again. Before we start the video, be sure to leave a like, and if you'd like to join this month's giveaway for one of these items on the screen, then all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, and then watch this video to the end to comment the hidden keyword. Good luck. It's a fact that members of different gangs are more likely to beef with each other. This is exactly one of the major reasons why Lil Durk and Lil J don't get along at all. Lil J is affiliated with the Gangsta Disciples, while Lil Durk, on the other hand, is affiliated with the OTF 600, a set of black disciples that's known for their feud with Gangster Disciples. At this point, a history of the beef between Lil Durk and Lil J will help to give an understanding of the relationship between the two and a beef that's been active for years. Lil J had not always been a Gangsta Disciple. He was originally a black disciple, but changed gang affiliation after moving to GD's territory. Around this time as well, OTF 600 had just been formed by Lil Boo and D-Thing, who was Lil Durk's older brother. Lil J had the desire to be a part of the newly formed OTF 600, but he would be faced with an obstacle. Lil J at the time was also cool with members of Ja Rose City, who were enemies of OTF 600. There was tension between the two gangs, and members of each gang regarded each other with hatred. This association with the enemy did nothing but ruin Lil J's chances of being accepted into the OTF 600 circle. He was even said that when he tried to join OTF 600, D-Thing had robbed him and then sent him off with a warning never to come to Steve Drive. After this incident, Lil J joined Gyro City. After joining Gyro City, he met with more members of STL, EBT, and would eventually meet FBG Duck, who he built a solid foundation with. Through his association, he found his way into the Flyboy Gang, a rap group that was formed by FBG Duck and had early members like Billionaire Black and Cash Out 063. A gang war had been brewing at the time and several notable gang members like Odie Perry and Tuka had been lost to the war. In March 2012, Lil Durk would release a diss track that would worsen tension between ops. This diss track is even considered by many as the reason why existing gang wars in Chicago got onto an even bigger level. The track was titled L's Anthem, and in the song, Lil Durk took shots at two sets of gangster disciples known as Wooga World and Brick Squad. In the song, he could be heard rapping, Brick Squad, I say fuck em. Wooga World with him, so fuck em. Before the release of L's Anthem, Lil Durk was already making waves on the Chicago drill rap scene, and in 2010 had even formed his rap group known as OTF, which consisted majorly of Black Disciples members. The L's Anthem diss track simply blew up locally and got airplay on several Chicago radio stations. This did not sit well with Lil Durk's ops, and this would prompt a Brick Squad member known as Lil Jojo to release a response diss track titled 300 BDK. BDK standing for Black Disciple Killer. In the track, he would diss Lil Durk by rapping, Durk say fuck Brick Squad, so I can't wait to catch him. Squeeze this fucking 40 now, they got him on a stretcher. The song brought Lil Jojo fame, but this would be short-lived because he was shot and killed in September 2012 by an unknown gunman in a van. It was said that Lil Jojo had made his location known on Twitter and this mistake had led to his murder. Lil Jojo's death was mocked by his ops who used social media and diss tracks. Lil J also got close to members of the Brick Squad after Lil Jojo's murder. The following year in April, Lil Durk would drop a track titled, This Ain't What You Want. This track was believed by some to be aimed at Brick Squad and also the deceased Lil Jojo. In the track, Lil Durk could be heard rapping the lines, a nigga claiming 300, at a K you done. These lines by Lil Durk took aim at the BDK movement, which was made popular by Lil Jojo through his 300 song. Now a few hours before the release of Lil Durk's This Ain't What You Want track, he went on Twitter to promote the song and also at the same time slammed the BDK movement. The post, which was made on April 17th, reads, Fuck whoever say 300k, lol, y'all broke niggas, wanna have a chance to see 300k, dollar signs. Hashtag, this ain't what you want. Drop tomorrow, RT. In September of that year, Lil Durk would go on Twitter to post the following, Banshee is the best bikes. 
This tweet was a subliminal diss at the deceased Lil Jojo since he had been caught in gunfire while riding on the back pegs of a friend's bike. But Lil Durk wasn't done with mocking his deceased stops. He would make another post on Twitter which reads, might still be alive if he had a banshee, lol. A close associate of Lil Jojo had gone to know about these posts and he would slam Lil Durk for it. The following day after this post by Lil Durk, FPG Duck would also clap back by mocking the death of a black disciple known as J Money. He had taken to his Twitter to address Lil Durk in the following post. At Lil Durk, sorry for y'all loss. Hashtag RIP J Money. J Money had been a close associate of Lil Durk who had suffered a gunshot wound to the head in the Westwood Lawn neighborhood. At the first post, FBG Duck also made another post concerning J Money's death. The post reads, We're gonna miss you boa at J Money 064 underscore O block. Lil J also gave his own opinion about J Money's death. He made a post on Twitter which reads, Guess it was macaroni time for J Money on death roads. Hashtag boom, hashtag boom, hashtag boom. That same month, Lil Durk would suffer another loss, and this time around, it was the death of the rising star LA Capone. He had been shot while leaving a recording studio. He then died at the hospital after losing a lot of blood. When news of LA Capone's shooting became known, Lil Durk had gone on his Twitter to post the following, Get well, Lil Bro. But after news that he had died at the hospital got out, Lil Durk would go on Twitter to confirm his death by posting, RIP Lil Bro. LA Capone's death came as a huge blow to his fans and homies, but his ops, on the other hand, mocked his death. In a post on Twitter, Lil J will make a mockery of his death by writing, I remember me at OTG underscore brick, at rib jaja underscore jojo, at FYB butter, at FBG underscore duck, beat Lil LAS on the bus on 35 coming from Dunbar on Tuca. The following month, Lil J would make another post mocking his deceased ops, RIP Sheroid, LA and DJ Money, with laughing with gun emojis, and with hashtag rest in piss. To this, Lil Durk responded by taking to his Instagram to make a post mocking Lil J. In August of that year, Lil J had made an appearance on an episode of National Geographic, Drug Inc. He had talked about the pressing issue concerning the nation's drug epidemic. This TV appearance by Lil J was what Lil Durk made a mockery of. In his post on Instagram, he had said the following, LOL, WTF Chicago Police Department foo-foo ass niggas be dry snitching, but they out here. Lil J would also respond to Lil Durk's comment by taking to his Twitter to make a post. At Lil Durk, L-M-A-O, you gon' see how much we out here. When your clown ass die, like J Money. Hashtag STL 063, hashtag BDK. I'm out here, right now. Hashtag BDK, hashtag turn up. Lil J at the time had also stepped onto the drill rap scene by releasing a track titled Critical, together with FBG Duck. The song was a diss track that was aimed at Chief Keef who, at the time, was dissing GDs in his song. In the critical track, Lil J raps the following lines. Chief Keef, you a poop stain, you a peon, you a lame. In the song, Lil J also took shots at several BDs, such as D-Thang and Odie Perry. It wasn't long before Lil J would be caught out in one of Lil Durk's songs titled Competition. The song itself was one of the 15 songs off Lil Durk's mixtape, which was titled Signed to the Street, and was released in October 2013. In the track, Lil Durk could be heard rapping the following lines. I catch a knob. I beat the shit. Catch Lil J. I heat his face. As you would expect, Lil J got wind of Lil Durk's track and wasn't ready to be disrespected like that. In response, Lil J took to his Twitter and addressed Lil Durk in a post. I'm really at your head now, creep. Following this, Lil J also dropped a diss track titled, Take You Out Your Glory. In the song, he took shots at OTF by rapping the lines. OTF like vegetarians, cause them niggas don't want beef. Lil Rob was in his glory until he got hit with the heat. Lil Durk would then go on to Twitter after this to say that Lil J needed to pay him $20,000 in order for him to diss Lil J again. A year later, in November 2014, Lil Durk was arrested on firearms charges. Authorities investigating a homicide have found him in a home with two handguns. But Lil Durk would not spend much time locked up behind bars as he was released a week after his arrest. His release came as sad news to his ops who expected him to spend more time locked up. One of the people who wasn't happy that he had been released was Lil J and he had gone online to release a video in which he claimed Lil Durk snitched to the authorities in exchange for his freedom. In the video, Lil J could be heard saying, You working with them people, what's your badge number? Attention everybody, watch out for Officer Durk. Hey, on some real shit, I know real niggas been down for real time. Get locked up again and your ass gone, have no bond. 
you got to sit in there unless you tell on somebody. Niggas ain't right. Niggas ain't real. Officer Dirk. The following month, Lil J would invite Lil Dirk and Chief Keef to a celebrity boxing match, which would enable them to settle their scores. According to Lil J, he had $50,000 to beat up Lil Dirk, and for Chief Keef, he had $100,000. Well, this boxing match did not hold because neither Chief Keef nor Lil Dirk honored the invitation. That same month, Lil J would undergo surgery to remove bullets that had been lodged in his body from a year-old shooting incident. The surgery was successful, and he was soon back on the streets. Lil J and his longtime buddy FBG Duck would eventually fall out and part ways. After parting ways with FBG Duck, Lil J went on to form his crew, which he called We The Ops. He formed this with his homie FBG Butter and another guy named Filmin Razine. On May 4, 2015, Lil J, FBG Butter, and Filmin Razine went to purchase marijuana from a guy called Jada Kid. The drug deal did not go well due to an argument that broke out, and in the process, Jada Kid and Filmin Razine were shot. Jada Kid survived the shooting, but Filmin Razine was not so lucky. Lil J and FBG Butter were both arrested and charged with reckless discharge of firearms and also with the murder of Razine. Lil J's bail was set to a $400,000 bond, but since he couldn't pay, he had to remain in jail. When this news got out, Lil Dirk took to social media to mock him by saying, how this bitch nigga got $50,000 but can't bond out? Well, FBG Butter spent only a few years in prison and was soon out. Word is that he took an eight-year plea deal, which Lil J turned down. The situation made Lil J believe that FBG Butter had betrayed him by snitching to the authorities. Four years after his arrest, Lil J was later convicted of conspiracy to commit murder, intent to kill and injure, and was sentenced to 14 years in jail. Three years later, he was out of jail, much to the surprise of everyone. After his release, he did not waste time to let the world know that he was back. He made a video in which he could be seen wearing a mask. He also released a song titled First Day Cloud in which he cleared the air on snitching allegations against him and also took shots at some deceased stops. When Lil Dirk saw that his longtime enemy was back, he took to his Instagram to say the following, Send me that shit of dude from the rack, tell him so I could post it. Hurry up. Lil J himself would not also back down from throwing shots at Lil Dirk. During an interview, he had claimed to be the face of Chicago while also dismissing Lil Dirk as the hottest rapper in Chicago. It's not yet known how the situation between Lil Dirk and Lil J will go from here. All we can do is cross our fingers and keep watching. That's all I've got for you on this video. Feel free to let me know what you think about it. Hey you, yeah you, did you like the video? Great, we got another one for you that we guarantee you'll like. And all you have to do is click on the screen. It's free and without any hidden fees. But you have to click on it fast because this message will self-destruct in 5 seconds.